yoga teachers are often afraid of or nervous about, concerned, what do I do if someone gets triggered in my class? And I'm like, have you taught a yoga class before? <laughs> They're like, yes. Someone's been triggered in your class before, <laughs> you know? Welcome back to the How We Can Heal podcast. Today, we're going to take a walk down memory lane and reflect on season two. And for that, we have a very special guest, Alex Castellanos. Alex and I have known each other for about seven years now. He is my partner in crime, and he was one of the inspirations to create this podcast. So he has listened to every single episode and you know heard me talk about the process of the podcast and how excited I am about the interviews. So he's going to give us a little bit of his perspective He's also one of the warmest, most caring, and compassionate people I know, so I'm super excited to share him with you today. So let's get reflecting with Alex Castellanos. Fun. High five. Yeah. <laughs> Alex Castellanos, welcome. Hi, Lisa. To the How We Can Heal podcast. Thank you. Are you so happy you're here? So happy. Thanks for having me. Of course, anytime. And you're going to ask me some questions today, too, which I'm excited about. But um, you're kind of one of the reasons that this podcast even exists, right? You want to take some credit? Yeah, you know, I've only been telling you you should start a part podcast since, I don't know, five years ago. 2016, maybe. <laughs> yeah, 2016. Ish. Plus yeah. or minus. 2017, maybe. So why did you want me to start a podcast? I've been listening to podcasts for a long time, and I just, from knowing you, I know that you're a great listener, and you know how to, like, uh, listen to people and ask them questions, and you're just really good at, like, bringing the best out in people. Oh, and so I thought that that's so great. sweet, my love. So uh, for those of you that don't know, Mr. Alex Castellanos is what I like to call my man friend. <laughs> We've been living together for many years now. Six years, seven years, six, something, something like Going that. Going on seven. And he has been telling me to start a podcast since about that same time, 2016 or so. Uh, and, you know, I kind of forgot that you had mentioned it for so long because it was one of those like in one ear. <laughs> You know, you always have a lot going on. And... Hovering, hovering around in my system. But I just want to give you credit that you planted the seed. You did. Thank you. Yes. So you wanted me to start a podcast because you felt like I was a good listener. Thank you very much. Um, did you also think about like all the different guests and people I would have on or what was in your mind? Uh, definitely. Uh, so I've been following your career and I've been around while you've been writing your books and doing your trainings and I've been learning a lot about yoga and trauma and how to heal. And so I, I know that you're a wealth of information that you've read everything there is and you're like really smart and you have a really good way of like making everything hopeful and uh, being positive and focusing on, on healing but also knowing like the foundations of like how people get to where they are. Mm. And if you don't know, then you know, like how to work your way back. When shit happens. Yes. <laughs> when it all hits the fan. Definitely. So again, credit to you for being not only one of the, the primary inspiration for the show, but also for making it possible by taking the dogs out for a walk every time I record. So the dogs are here with us today and you might hear a little in the background. I won't do it too loud because I'll get them going. <laughs> you know it will, right? Oh well, yeah. <laughs> you don't do it either. They're over here by the door. Don't do booming speak. Patiently. He will hop right on the mic as he has before. Okay, so you've listened to pretty much every episode at this point, right? Yes. And what have you enjoyed or appreciated? What stood out to you about the show so far? Uh, I appreciate that diversity, like the uh, different guests that you're bringing in. And again, the way that you're able to relate to them and ask about what they do, 
about their passion, about why they they do what they do and why they're like in this journey to help people, to help people heal, mm -hmm. mainly from trauma. Right. Do you have a favorite episode thus far? <sighs> so many. Uh, All I, th of them. I think I, I think it just uh, in my recent memory, I really liked your mom's. Yeah, uh, the yeah, Nunahia. Lin Lynette, yes. That was a great episode. I remember the most about the, I mean, she had, so, she's just a wealth of uh, wisdom. Yeah. And I remember her talking to you about listening and remaining open. Yeah. Amid, among many other things. Raw Goddess, I thought was like really good uh, about changing your relationship with money or resources and right because she's such a change maker too and i feel like you and i've talked about this outside of the podcast of like becoming involved in like certain causes to the point where it, they're kind of draining you or you're getting like it's not actually causing the improvement that you want it to outwardly or inwardly right it's like it's instead of it being an upliftment it's sort of like a tangle in the trauma or in the messages that we absorb in the in the wake of trauma right like not feeling worthy or all these other things right so i thought i mean i knew you would love her episode because we listened to her audio course together right. and we were like yes yes she's amazing uh but i felt like she articulated some of those things really well that like you and i have both thought independently or we maybe had conversations around but she just like nailed it with some of these beliefs that we have around self-worth or our relationship to um to being a helper even and i know a lot of people who listen to this podcast would describe themselves as helpers or healers or they or want to go in that direction professionally right i mean there's so many things that so many ways that we can help in the world today there's so many challenges and issues that we face so i felt like she was really positive about that and i know you appreciate that too definitely yeah wow i thought denise was really good too mm, duffield thomas yes mm -hmm. yeah uh i just thought that she was just a little more everyday chill yeah just <laughs> do this do that you know just very straightforward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but again it, her main message was about changing your relationship with with money and how you right. think about it and how you see yourself and which is such an alive topic these days i feel like there's like inflation and economy and people are you know watching the stock markets or stressed out about things and so it, it's nice it was great for me to interview both of them and to come back to this feeling of like i remember raw goddess talking about source right like resource and source and can we return to a spiritual orientation when we're talking about money, which I think is hard for a lot of people, right? And then Denise had this like, just chill, <laughs> like, don't yeah. overwork yourself to, to death and get stuck in this like trauma vortex, hyper arousal all the time, you know? And I feel like I, I've i been there where I'm like, ah, right? Like this tension. And so to just bring that chill and bring that spirituality, it's like, for me, it was very refreshing. I don't know if it came across. I don't always listen <laughs> to the podcast. I'm there for the recording. Sometimes I listen, sometimes I don't. But Alex always reports back to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought the biggest thing was like, again, changing that mindset of deal, operating with limited resources to knowing that there are enough resources mm. and that they are available to you. Mm. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, so what have you learned or maybe been reminded of as you've listened to the show? Because, you know, we got to repeat the things that we learn and the things that we know. It's not like you just hear it once and it clicks forever. So I was just thinking about Shelly. Yeah. And how he talked about how relationship is mm -hmm. really important. Mm -hmm. And so... I think one of the biggest things when you experience trauma or like repeated trauma, you tend to isolate yourself mm. and it's when you need people the most, but then people don't feel safe. So then 
you isolate yourself or you push people back and when it is what you need the most mm -hmm. relationship you need to be able to count on people to know that people are there for you that they love you and that they wish you the best right and um it's really difficult to feel that yeah when you're experience when you're triggered Right. When you're experiencing trauma or when you're triggered. And it's interesting. I think about, you know, EMDR therapy and what I've seen in clients and other folks I know who provide EMDR. And it's often, and this applies outside of that, that protocol as well. But, you know, we remember, you know, when we're in sort of the, the story of the trauma, we'll remember the really painful things. And then often we kind of break through it and start processing some of the really intense emotion, we start to remember, oh, there was this person that was really nice to me, right? Like, even though everything had just hit the fan, I got help here or someone showed up and it could be the smallest things like someone opened a door for me or someone called a cab or, right? Or it could be really profound, like someone saw me hurting and, and called for help, but we start to sort of internalize that support and that helping, I think, more as we're going through a healing journey of sorts. So, yeah, that relational piece is huge. And I feel like especially right now, if you can call it post-COVID, wherever we are, <laughs> where folks have been isolated for so many reasons and for so long and in so many ways, it's like we need that connection so much. But sometimes we can forget how or we can be triggered and in our own defenses or in the sort of hyper independent American, I can do it myself. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I appreciated Shelly. That was episode 11. Shelly, it's quits. Yeah. Just oh. focusing on that relational piece and how important human connection is. Yeah. So what would you like to see in the future in season three? Season three, um, just continue to interview the, uh, great people that you know yeah all the people that are out there making a difference helping people and help, helping people heal yeah anything you want to ask me um let's see here so i know that i planted the seed <laughs> right but why did you finally start and i know the answer to this but maybe people listening don't well, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, part of the answer. I feel like you planted the seed. I wasn't a big podcast listener. I was like, la, 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 I don't need to do another thing. But I think you did plant that seed. And then somewhere in 2019, actually, I, uh, Guy McPherson, who came on the podcast in season one, has a really amazing podcast, the Trauma Therapist Podcast. I've been a guest a number of times there. And he was doing a podcast workshop. Like, a mental become a mental health podcaster and i was like oh that looks interesting so it was the first time he'd ever done it and i was like i'm just gonna take this class maybe i'll start a podcast and as a result of that or maybe alongside it i also started a note in my phone and like a google google doc or something like that and um i started listing all the guests i wanted and the questions i would ask them and like i mean it became like a 16 page document pretty quickly and then I was in a training with Gabby Bernstein, who um, and we were in a small group and just having conversation. And she was the first episode uh, of this podcast. Right. And so she was like, I don't know why, Lisa, I just feel like intuitively you need to start a podcast. And I was like, Gabby, <laughs> I have a list of people I want to interview on my podcast and you're on that list. And she was like, all right, let's do it. And so that's how it started. Um, so yes, you planted the seed a long time ago. It slowly grew and nourished over time. And Gabby was like, make it happen. So here we are at the end of season two. Thank you, Gabby. And it's happening. Yeah. Cheers to Gabby. And thanks to you for following through. And thanks to you for planting the seed. Thanks Bye. all around. What else? So you asked me what some things that I remember from different podcasts. What are your like favorite moments so far? I feel like I learned so much talking to each person and I really enjoy the conversations. I finish up and I'm like more energized and you usually ask me, how did it go? And I'm like, great. Yeah, <laughs> and definitely. I just 
listen to it. Like, I don't even know how to recap everything that we just covered. Um, but I would say the moments that stand out to me the most are the funny ones, like the Nuna Hiat song that we finally recorded, <laughs> our claim to fame. Yeah. Singing the Nuna Hiat song. And then I have to say episode two, shout out to Chris Carr, when we were talking about her dog farting <laughs> and how Boomy farts and then gets scared and <laughs> chases his tail around. Um, just like little moments of levity. I mean, because we were talking about Chris Carr and I were talking about cancer and, you know, death and dying. And we talked about that in season three as well, or uh, episode three with Suzanne. So I feel like I love the depth and the way I can get to know guests even a little bit more and have just different focused conversations, right? Because it's rare that you just have a conversation these days where there's no interruption, no dinging or like the purpose is just to have a conversation. So I love that. And then I love that we can go really deep and talk about hard things and not be skirting it or afraid of it. We can just sort of face the truth pretty much head on and then also laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and also be silly. And like Carrie talked about this season, right? Where it's like, play and going into a class and if we're really rigid about oh it has to look exactly this way then there's this fear that comes into our body and this sort of freeze certain kind of freeze energy that comes over us whereas if we're like play with it and just see and laugh and be free like that's just a totally different experience in our bodies and i have all kinds of you know neurobiological theoretical explanations for that in my brain but the feeling of it i think we all can relate to and that that to me has been really powerful, being able to talk openly, talk about hard things and also laugh and be joyful. You know, Jennifer Jimenez also this season talked about dance and like even giving birth right from a place of like, this is how it has to be versus from a place of let me work with my body. And there's just like a a light kind of easy energy that even when we're talking about hard things can come through. And so that that's been really refreshing for me. Yeah, so I was thinking about. I thought one of the, real one of the things I really like about podcasting is, you're listening to two people connect, and you're also connecting with them. So by the end of the podcast, you've gotten to know another person, and you actually feel connected. Mm. And so I I really do like that about it. I was thinking about a couple more things, but <laughs> I was like, you look like you're going to say yeah, something else. Not everyone can see. But, you, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I lost them. It's all right. It happens to me all the time. What in impact our, do you hope in our ripe young age? I know, right? <laughs> so young, so young, still so young. No, yeah, actually, I remember now. So okay. one of the things I was, I was thinking about is resourcing. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about like having funny moments or making light of things. And that's one of the things that I think, again, I admire about you and about the work that you do, that you do focus on the positive and you do focus on resourcing, meaning that you have to be able to, to do things that help you stay regulated and that yeah. help you feel, feel good, feel happy, feel love, right? So that you're able to go in and deal with the difficult things. Right. And when you're not feeling like you can, you pull yourself back and then again, you resource, mm -hmm. you bring yourself back. And then, so again, diet, rest, right. <laughs> exercise. You know, I always go to the yoga. physiological first. I'm all, <laughs> right. Did you drink water? Have you had food? Have you slept? Okay. Now. <laughs> yeah. Which is basic, but right. I, I mean, our moods are are influenced by a lot of things, social interaction too, right? And if we don't have some basic pillars, right? But also, you know, you and I talk about this a fair amount too, of like having a spiritual connection. And if we're all physically focused with no spirituality or sort of reflective, even self connection, then things start to get dry, right? Definitely. Yeah. And I know for you and I being outside and being in nature, just out in the trees. Being connected to nature. That's a big thing. Definitely. Yeah. So what impact do you hope to make by having these conversations? 
So one thing I've noticed that's come up from Gabby's episode all the way until the most recently recorded, which is going to be in season three, uh, eventually when it comes out, we don't have a release date for that yet, but um, I do have some really amazing guests in season three. Um, one of the things that has stood out as a theme that kind of feels like this intergenerational <laughs> gift that I've been given is uh promoting an understanding of of trauma but also uh but mostly of the impacts of complex trauma early childhood trauma and the and the role of dissociation in post-traumatic stress what that can look like which can be challenging to pick up on uh, but just recognizing that dissociation is a is a relatively common thing especially in in trauma survivors especially in early childhood trauma survivors especially in people who have experienced multiple traumas um, at a young age and so just naming that because i feel like the whole thing about dissociation is there's something that we don't know or there's something that's sort of intangible or that goes away or we can't access and so i think just naming that that's the truth sometimes even with like early childhood trauma or early childhood attachment stuff, right? Like there's no words for it. How do we, like, how do, how do we talk about something when it's kind of by definition, it doesn't want to be known or seen it's, it's too much. So I've really enjoyed talking to people and, and bringing their perspective, their research on dissociation, which is coming in season three um, and just getting different perspectives on like I think of it really as kind of overused as the term is like holistic healing, right? Like body, mind, spirit, if you will. But but also just bringing together this piece of knowing that sometimes as a default, not knowing is the best sort of choice that a child has or a person has, right? In order to get through something difficult. So I think we focus, and I get this question all the time when it comes to yoga and trauma, people, yoga teachers are often afraid of or nervous about, concerned, what do I do if someone gets triggered in my class? And I'm like, have you taught a yoga class before? <laughs> and they're like, yes, someone's been triggered in your class before, <laughs> you know, whether it was an internal trigger and they were frustrated by something or they were angry or they were projecting or they were dissociating, but people tend to think of triggers as just being hyper arousal that's outwardly displayed. And hyper arousal number one isn't always outwardly displayed, especially if there's also dissociation at play. And so one of the things that I hope this podcast can do is just continue this conversation around trauma and dissociation in a way that's very inclusive of all of us. Like this isn't, certain people who qualify for a DSM diagnosis, this is looking at the way we've come to understand our nervous systems and how they respond to trauma, looking at the way, you know, human beings cope in all these different fashions, and then just getting curious about that and being inclusive of that rather than getting really rigid. So I'm, I'm hoping those conversations help to educate, help to open up more conversations that ultimately bring us in a healing direction, right? So we can be curious and we can keep all the cards on the table rather than saying like, oh, dissociation, well, I don't know about that. So we're not gonna talk about it. It's like, well, let's talk about it. Let's learn about it then. I, even I think Shelly was saying like, dissociation expert in quotes, right? Because, you know, I know tons of folks who have worked in the field for 30, 40, 50 years and they are considered highly esteemed experts. And yet any of them will say when they sit down with a new client or even a client they've worked with for a long time, you don't feel like an expert, right? Like you know a lot and you bring that to the table, but every human being is gonna have a different story and a different manifestation. And especially when we start talking about dissociative disorders, not otherwise specified, right? Like it's just an adventure that, you know, hopefully an educated one, but that we step into, you know, more in relationship than as, expert providing treatment, right? So I think there's also a little bit of that disruption happening in um, across a lot of fields in terms of just questioning, right? Things that we've assumed for a long time or, you know, being open to new ways of thinking or understanding. And so I think it'll be a part of that. Yeah, I, I think 
So bringing awareness keeps on coming up for me as yeah. you're talking. Yeah. And uh, you can't work on something that you're not aware of. But once you have that awareness, and I think you and your mom were talking about this too in the podcast. There was another thing that stuck in my mind about your mom. Yeah. Uh, where she talks. So, so you talk about like uh, top down and bottom up. Processing, yeah. But she talked about from the heart, right? Mm -hmm. From the center out, up and down. Right? And out from the and center out, out. Right, from the center out. Exactly. Yeah. So one last question. Sure. What gives you hope? Oh, stop it. You give me hope. Oh, no, stop the it. The puppies give me hope. That is a great question. No one has asked me that recently. Um, I will say that one thing that really helps me when I'm feeling overwhelmed or there's you know a lot of tasks to do or just the world, you know, I accidentally look at the news <laughs> or right. I mean, I'm aware of a lot of things. I'm aware of a lot of things that are going on in the world and I try not to get immersed in too much of the painful narrative. I try to stay connected to all these amazing guests coming on the show to the fact that there's, you know, I don't even know how many, but like probably hundreds of thousands or millions of nonprofits in the world who are and for profit, even organizations who are trying to do good. And there's so many good people in the world. And I try to stay connected to that. But in moments where I'm feeling like it's all a little much. I just walk outside and I look up <laughs> and whatever it is, if it's daytime and there's clouds or there's a tree above me or maybe some birds. You know, especially at night when there's stars. I'm just like, ah, oh, that's okay. Like for a moment, and I know, I know there's climate change is real. And I know that there's a lot of real stress Mother Earth is under. But for me to walk outside and just see healthy birds, <laughs> stars in the sky makes me feel small in a beautiful way. And a lot of times this will be like, I'll be taking the dogs out at the end of the day to go pee. <laughs> you know, long day. Lots of traumatic narratives. I just met with people who've had all kinds of abuse from hour to hour. And then I'll just walk outside on the grass or pavement. Usually there's a couple rocks, you know, our backyard, <laughs> a couple rocks under your feet for some acupressure. And, you know, dogs will be off in the bushes going pee or doing their thing at the end of the day. And I'll just look up and I'll be like, oh. and so the thing that maybe gives me relief is nature and you know grandma i wish i could have had her on this podcast oh my god yeah ah oh, oh, i don't know next life um grandma would always say as you know the sky the trees the birds the bees it's all so beautiful right she would just sit on her back porch and admire very simple you know suburban long island <laughs> mother nature um, and so for us, yeah, even out here in the East Bay, just walking in the backyard and looking up is huge for me. And I don't know that that's hope. It's more like relief. Um, and I think what does give me hope is really just these people, honestly, that I've interviewed on the podcast and knowing how many people in the world are committed to not sacrificially <laughs> in a martyr way, trying to save the world, but are really committed to being thoughtful and skillful and supportive of one another, um, who are also, you know, just trying to have a nice life amidst the challenges they are aware of and see. Um, I'm forgetting who said something along these lines, but some quote somewhere, of course, that I can't remember now, but like, this is our ride, <laughs> you know? Actually, my mom said that to me once. This is our ride, this is our ride. And so, yeah, stepping outside reminds me that my feet are on this planet that is massive. I mean, even though we know there's so much beyond it, it in and of itself, my little body compared to the planet, you know, I'm like the tiniest little microbe. That perspective shift really helps me kind of take a load off and then just knowing that I'm not alone and trying to improve things. And 
there's this um, participant in one of my workshops in Denmark years ago, and her saying was, there is a way through. There is a way. And just and when she was in the depths of her trauma, just remembering there's a way through this. There is a way. I'm just finding it, finding it one little step at a time. Like that comes to mind, too, of just knowing, like, we'll find our way through this somehow or another. <laughs> And we'll do our best. And, and I think that's all we can really ask of ourselves. And then those light moments also just give such a, they provide so much relief and even joy in and of, in and of themselves um, that feel more like, okay, like this is really important. This is what life is about. I have a little sticker over there. I think it's behind the wooden thing you gave me. But um, I think it was, is it Thoreau? Um, Surely joy is the condition of life. And so that's always a nice flip too, because when you're in a, a, a trauma, you know, when you're focused on healing trauma, you can just see trauma everywhere. Right. Right. But I've known people who've been through the most horrific things that are just the most beautiful, hilarious beings. And so, yeah, that's a long answer to what gives me relief and what gives me hope. And hope. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, Mr. Yeah, Alex. Thanks for Castellanos. having me. Should you come back another time, perhaps? Perhaps. Have you enjoyed this experience? Very much. He was looking thank, forward thank, to it. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, I did want to ask you, though, yeah. how, can, how can people find you and see what are you up to? Well, my podcast is available anywhere you download your podcasts. <laughs> uh, so howwecanheal.com is sort of the home website. You can also go to lisadanelchuk.com if you can spell it. D-A-N-Y-L-C-H-U-K. Uh, but howwecanheal.com is where I have programs and, and things of that nature. You can also get my audiobook if you like listening to this podcast. You might like the audiobook, which is on Audible, Yoga for Trauma Recovery. And I'm kind of on social media. <laughs> you and I have You're both you and I have both like deleted the apps entirely at certain points in our lives. Um so yeah, Instagram, it's how we can heal. And uh, Facebook, it's Lisa Danilchuk, MFT. Um, and those are probably the main two. I'm also on Twitter a little bit. <laughs> Same thing, Lisa Danilchuk and Yoga for Trauma is the other handle um, that I have as well. But yeah, I really appreciate when folks who listen to the podcast let me know what they've appreciated about the podcast and take a little stroll down memory lane like we have um, and let us know you know ideas you have for future guests i've got uh season three pretty well mapped out already but we're gonna keep going best i can that's the plan we've got a little pause between now and season three but uh always love to hear from you so if you go to howwecanheal.com backslash podcast there's a survey there and I would love to hear from you and hear, you know, whatever suggestions, whatever feedback you've got. I'm all ears. Anything else? Any other way people should contact me? Oh, I think. Uh... Go find me on the Brandon Trail. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being willing and for reflecting with me. And I will see you all. And season three coming soon. Yay. If you want to know when season three is coming, you can sign up for my email list. How would they do that? Howwecanheal.com. And then there'll, there'll be a pop-up. Um, and you can sign up for my email list there. And then I'll give you all the inside scoop. Keep us updated. Give you all the inside scoop on everything. Um, also going to be in Melbourne in uh, November. I'm trying to think this. You this have a episode workshop coming up. up. I have a workshop, a workshop October 1st in San Francisco. I have another training with the Nuna Hiat, my mom that's available virtually. It's in Arizona, October 7th and 8th. And then I'll be teaching at a conference in Melbourne, the ISSTD conference there. I believe I'm teaching on November 13th. It's a three-day conference. So folks in Australia, coming for you. And I'd love to hear your recommendations. I've never been to Melbourne before. So... Nice. You know, we can chat about that too. And thanks for taking care of the dogs while I'm away. My love. I will take care of the puppies. Oh, you're such they'll a good, take care of me. You're such a good puppy caretaker. Yeah, they take care of us too, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. 
All right, y'all. Take good care, and I will see you in season three. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm so looking forward to season three. I've already scheduled and recorded a few interviews. However, we are going to take a pause. And so if you want to be in the loop and know when season three is coming out, please go to howwecanheal.com and sign up for my email list there. Y'all will be the first to know when we have an episode drop date for episode three, or season three, (laughs) rather. I'm super excited to share some of these guests with you and have a lot of ideas in mind. So also please let us know what you think, what you want. Love to hear from you. Go to howwecanheal.com backslash podcast and you'll find a survey there. I would love to hear from you that way or you can just send out an email. Just let us know. Info at howwecanheal.com. All right. Thanks so much for listening and I'm sending you lots of love. to go to college, Mm -hmm. to get a good job, to earn money. So they expect that that investment is going to pay off. But there's also this unspoken thing that I'm not allowed to make more than my dad. So it's like, what do you do with that? You know, you kind of go, it's all unspoken too. Yeah. Completely unspoken. Um,